Right, hello everybody. Welcome to um, the round of 32 chalice game between Purple Chest and his dwarves and Thomas T and his Dark Elves. And in the booth is Chunter and Skuro. Hello. Hello, how are we doing today? <laughs> Exciting. Don't show. be... Yeah, don't be fooled by Andy's face. This is Thomas T taking on Purple Chest. Some, uh, you know, the most dwarfiest of dwarf teams you can expect going up against the bunch of, well, slightly less now, Dark Elves. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing I, I at that. I actually picture. don't have Andy's face in the, in the client here. Like, I, I actually just have a normal logo. Oh, that's but... because you're using your client, not uh, uh -huh. looking at Jim's stream. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, because I've got the uh, you know the Blood Bowl Super League thing, but it doesn't replace it on the field, which I don't know why. That's I'm gonna have to m mess about with it. I don't understand why it doesn't change it on the field. But there you go. So yeah, so, just just Andy's face doesn't. Uh, no, there's another there's another one or two that don't yeah, as well. Weird. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, right. So yeah. So here we go. So there's loads of guard, loads of mighty blow. It's absolutely terrifying uh, team for PC. Um, and Thomas T has a pommer and, and some bludge. <laughs> wrestle strip, wrestle strip witch there. Uh, one interesting build here you have to mention is like um, um, Purple just really likes to put, put darts on his berserker. Um, like he also always says, like he's, he's a bit of a lightning deflector because everyone likes to blitz AP8. Yeah. So um, we'll have to see if that happens in this this game as well. Yeah, and because of the frenzy, they get themselves in situations where they get hit more accidentally as well, don't they? Um, what do you think about the dirty player on the other runner, on the second runner there? I think it's all right. It gives you an option, doesn't it? Like, it, you don't really need the second runner very, very often. So, to make him a bit versatile with either wrestle or dirty player, I don't mind. Um, though I tend to just give mine block. Um, but, you know, he's, he's low TV, isn't he? So, like... He could be getting dirty player and stuff. He, you know, sorry, yeah, he could be getting bribes and stuff. So if you've got, if you're getting bribes, like in in subsequent rounds, because like he thinks he's going to win this. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> no matter how humble he tries to be, <laughs> he definitely thinks he's winning this game. Um, and so I guess you know, if you're down a bunch of TV against Claw Pommers, you can get a bribe and you can stick some fouls in. And you know, losing a backup runner isn't that bad if you get sent off. I guess is his thinking. Yeah. So we've already got a huge mistake by Thomas T here, starting his turn one with only nine players when he's allowed to bring a full eleven. <laughs> yeah. uh, he could pay for that one. Yeah, it's it's going to be so hard for him because he has to have players not die, doesn't he? And then then he could get in the way with the blood step, and he could like cause some trouble because you know dwarves are slow. So like maybe he can do something, but it's relying on players not getting removed, and I think he's going to get removed. I'm just wondering if you would be tempted to get sneaky git on that on that dirty player as well. Like it it, it feels like something you can work with. Like you don't <laughs> want to lose him. So it's interesting. Yeah. Should have piled, shouldn't he? Classic. Should have piled. Yeah. Classic Elf Palmer, never gonna pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, PC it's, has a bribe for this game. So yeah, he has a bribe. Even for this game, where he looks to be... He looks like he's the higher TV team. He's still got a bribe for this game. Jesus Christ. That's fucking insanity. <laughs> it is. No, he's yeah, not he gonna has... pile on with no one to defend that Palmer you know, four squares away from a dirty player and a bribe. <laughs> Just not going to happen. Yeah, he has to be super careful here. It's an absolute loot night nightmare to face this. It's just an absolute nightmare. Oh, so what have you been up to today, Jim? That's crazy, isn't it? Like... What do you do? What do you do, Chunter? What do you do here as the Dark Elves? Yeah, I, I would say just generally play the waiting game. You know, the thing if, 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 for me, the big difference between like um, Dark Elves and Skaven is like Dark Elves are freaking expensive, aren't they? Compared yeah. to like 
like the escape yep. and counterpart. So usually you have a bench with the escape, and then usually you have the um, some yeah some room to actually lose some players on the field, so you can play more aggressively. And I, I don't think you can do that with that well with uh, with dark elves. Of course, you have claw as well on the Skaven team, so that helps a lot of, as, as well in this matchup. So it it, it feels yeah, think... like. Go, yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead. No, no, you finish your sentence. Finish your sentence. <laughs> it, it feels like he's he's definitely gonna feel like locked in until turn eight, and then maybe just just try to go for a last minute sec or just go for one turn or just try something like that. Like there's not much stand from like. Two stand firm is on there. It's not three stand firm, is it? No, you only two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's something like that. It's, it's it seems like a really scary uh, situation, and I don't know what Thomas T's game plan is. Um, but we're about to find out. I don't know what it can be. Like, yeah, I mean, hasn't that, got any guard at all. That's kind of. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was feeling too, Chanter. Like you just, as the dark elves, like especially after taking two KOs on the line of scrimmage, basically. <laughs> You just back off, play as passive as you can, understand that there's basically nothing you're doing to stop PC scoring an eight, and maybe maybe get a one turn. You know, you've got two friends of yours. One of them's a sidestepper. You know, there's a chance at a one turn here because of the only the two stand firm, and that's your best hope, I think. <laughs> it's just not losing elves, giving them one hit a turn no matter what, and not doing anything crazy unless PC does something insane to give you a shot at the ball. You don't want a double one or anything now, just fucking you over while you just um, while you just do your first dodge, you know? Like, if you, if you do now, if you if you roll that one in 36 while dodging your first player, like, the other two are going to get hit. Like, this is always just a scary part of playing an agility team. Um, I've, I've said this on the stream before as well, like, I I said this on my stream earlier earlier today, like, I I do feel like a lot of people um, that, that get into Blood Bowl usually take the, the more Basho route um, when they start out and for me it's a bit of a shame because like I do feel like a lot of people uh, miss out on trying to view the game as we do if you know what I mean like very positional and very deep because like they usually see the simple option of trying to get the removals and try to win the game that way of course it's going to be a big problem if you don't get the removals so then they actually have to play Blood Bowl but um, there's a lot of situations where they where they don't, you know. Chunter just, Chunter just exposed Jimmy's entire Blood Bowl experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what's interesting here. I mean, th this is a real nice... That, that was actually a little bit unlucky to get the removal, right? Because he was going to he was gonna assist and then chain, chain the ball carrier back or whatever. But at least chain him on a push, at least chain away. So whereas now he's if he gets a push, he's going to give up contact. But that was nearly a great way of just knocking down all four players, wasn't it? And not getting any blocks back that was really nice from thomas t there but obviously he's still happy to get the ko uh, but it does mean he's going to get a block back yeah i, I think he likes the ko slightly more there because yes. he, he did he, he did blitz there to initiate that kind of change so like he would have lost the blitz there anyway so like getting that removal is a, is a bit nicer but um yeah not bad from thomas t good find yeah. definitely yeah, it was good. That was a good turn. Just, just take all the punches because, like, it is a bit tricky, right? Even though he's got no guard, like, it's that's the thing. If he, if, if Thomas T had a guard, he could put his guard in and try and like crack, you know, crack down like he did there with all, all those knockdowns. And so it is going to be hard because obviously, like, PC should be able to to get the right hits in, and you know, base intelligently so that he's not giving this away. But uh, that was good. That was good from Thomas T there. Uh. I have I have watched a few of them, Doc. Although I gotta say, like, um, there, there weren't that many Wood Elf games to watch because they all got eliminated quite quickly, I believe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was also quite focused on just just trying to do to play an excellent game um, of of Halflings versus the Chaos that lasted three turns. So like, <laughs> yeah, it was brief, wasn't it, that game? That was very brief, yeah. No. I think I threw away like the, the lucky <laughs> dice Another with, KO. with the Camry that day, like the big Camry play we did before the before starting that match. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that used up too much luck. Yeah, Definitely. that was insane. Silly, silly mistake to make using your luck up, uh, you know, before the <laughs> before the chalice. Yeah, amateur amateur mistake there. <laughs> 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 Well, the uh, the elf that that stayed uh, in base contact was just KO'd. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty severe punishment for for nice play last time. 
<laughs> I'm not alright, that was thought. That was always the danger, wasn't it? Oh, glorious red. Thank you very much, the Captain Cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy. <laughs> Captain Cloaca. Elliot. Um, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. <laughs> You join us on a, on a knife edge here in this match. It's anybody's <laughs> game. Well, and, it's, yeah, I don't really like exposing the the, the the troll slayer in particular. This I think is a little bit of a risk here, because like this is too easy to really just get a removal on. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to see. Yeah. Just, yeah, if he, he famously it, does not care about his slayers at all. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. But like, I feel like if he exposes it, he should keep that that mighty blow tackler at least covered yeah. or screened off from the player. Like that's that's not that's not a good way to um, to handle that. But he has his classic cage side uh, uh, set up, so like, um, it looks like he's just in a good position anyway. God, this is this is about as as well as it could be going when you lose two players off the LOS. To be fair, isn't it? He's not he's not giving up any ground yet. Yeah, really. And every one of those losses is only a KO. Can uh, be the saving grace or the hope that uh, stabs you in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I've seen a little bit more from Thomas T in general, and I, I do feel like he is um, underrated. Like I gotta say, like I, I do feel like people are not giving him enough respect for what he um, what he can do. And you can also see the positioning here, it's, it's, it's just really clean from the Dark Elves in general. Yep, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think he's uh, overrated in his ability to keep his Elves on the pitch, though, and not get KO'd. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's the problem, it doesn't matter if you just get removed at every but No, no, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess I guess he could be underrated by some people. I always I always rate him quite highly. I, I, uh, I always thought he was a... Uh, you know, I've played him a few times in Rebel. And, in uh, my in my daily ratings that I that I write for myself and don't share to anyone on everyone who plays in CCL, he's mid 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 tier. I think I've never <laughs> seen him play before. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess if you've never seen him play before, then you might under underest. But that's just underestimating people in general, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. Um, I think if you look at the two teams, it's not unreasonable to feel that PC has a significant advantage. Yeah, yeah. Huge <laughs> and that's before the game teams. started, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let alone I've now. Massive, massive advantage on teams to PC. But, yeah, you know, Thomas T is very good at the whole, you know, Dark Elves just maximizing blocks all the time in defense, basically. Um, that, like, that's their bread and butter, isn't it? Just, just try and get as many knockdowns as they can and then, uh, you know, get in the way. Holding the center to make it harder, you know, for... PC to get forward, just trying to hold them up as much as possible. Isn't that Help me, do. in my humble opinion, one of the best commentators. How much are we on a on a on a no spoiler department in the in the other league games regarding the other league games? Um, um, I don't care. I don't know because I might put. I don't know what order I'm going to put them on the YouTube's, so it might spoil it for other so YouTube like, so people. Um, so I don't know. So okay, then I'll keep quiet about the other game uh, that that happened today. <laughs> Is that Rick's game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it. I totally forgot it was on. I would have, I would have totally watched it on Rick's channel, but uh, I just literally completely forgot it was happening. I don't like this so much because he is at maximised blocks here, but he's taken three players to do it, hasn't he? And now those three players, well, those two are going to be on the wrong side of the ball. Yeah. Next turn. I think maybe he should just run away. Yeah, I do have the feeling though with the four removals already being there that you don't really aren't really enthusiastic about engaging anymore. Like I think the most important thing is just keeping the rich elf safe safe here and keeping the killer safe. I think I would have bailed on this I would have bailed on this defense about two turns ago personally. Yeah, fair. And at least he's got the, the sidestepper holding the edge, so at least he's got a chance if, if he's not powered, I guess. I mean, it, things look pretty grim if even I say like you gotta abandon your uh, abandon your defense. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think, I think that I think it's worse. I think the worst part about those two linemen on the on the on the right that were maximizing those blocks and are now behind the ball is that those two aren't at any risk of getting hit. All the good players are still at risk of getting hit. Yeah, yeah. Right now. You want yeah. those two guys getting drilled if anyone's gonna get hit at this point. 
I don't know. I'd rather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd. Yeah, exactly. PC would rather be drilling a witch elf right now, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Set you up and you knocked it down, Jim. Woo! Beautiful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Massive equity shift. <laughs> that is a DP runner, and he's got a bribe as well. He may maybe he'll foul this this sidestepper here. Maybe not. Really. He's got a. As much as he wants to drill them down, he's got to be careful not to expose his ball ball too much to the. To the witch elves here, because like they can definitely, definitely leap in and uh, and, and find a fortunate one. Maybe he will even do it on an uphill. Yeah, I feel like, like he's. Bit, I feel like PC's been a bit too conservative here. He does go for the foul. Gets the bribe. <laughs> oh, no. The hits they keep on coming. Didn't uh, bribe even. not used. <laughs> yeah, the ideal moment to sack the ball would be in this turn or in next turn, probably. I because agree. If, if you're going to do it. Yeah. If they're going to do it, they have to do it now. But that's, that's, that's uh, like the, the the best point of where you still have enough players to actually do something. And um, it's going to be too late for the Dwarves to probably score back. He can't do it like now, though, you... can he? He can't, because it's yeah. three dice up there. <laughs> Triple red. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, got to wait another turn. Jesus Christ, what a, what a horrific cage that is. <laughs> yeah. The H for horrific there. <laughs> She's made kind of like a giraffe if you count the, you can, uh, the you can, DP up there for the head. You can clearly see here how much positional um, positional <laughs> difficulty you have with, with the dwarves. Like, it's just so difficult yeah. to position the dwarves. <laughs> I mean, he's not getting. He's not that far forward, is he? He's still got three turns. Like, there's there's no dark elves left, really. But you know, he, he's a little bit in the way, isn't he? He might trip over their corpses on the way to yeah. the end zone. So. I think I can't think jump this, yet. I think this is not even that bad because now Purple Chess has to extend a little bit, maybe just to 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 make make a bit of an area, like. Um, there, there could be the threat of the elves just elf screening in the end, you know, and, and making it really hard for him to uh, to get through. So, like, he has to extend a little bit, and that extension might lead into that 2D uphill, into 2D uphill that uh, Thomas C wants. So, who knows? I was going to say, he can just go right through this elf. <laughs> <laughs> he can, yeah. He gets Perfectly fine. But he, but he can't go past them, though, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is about as well as yeah. it can be going when you've lost five players and you're on defense. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did the apple come in on that? Yeah, it did. Yeah. On the cast, the uh, foul. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much Corpex, pretty much. Um, <laughs> right. So. Mash it all in, isn't it? Mash in. Do, you, do you move a little bit forward? Yeah, I guess you do. You just move it over to next to the dirty player, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. So to to the understand firm player. So maybe from that angle you can do something. If you're Thomas C here, I'm I'm not 100% sure. This is gonna be like <sighs> rough turn. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's not good, is it? <laughs> if you had five more players, you'd be looking <laughs> no. pretty good right this now. This is. <laughs> this is the classic turn in which the Dark Elves have a miracle play and then they just snake the first roll they make. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, he doesn't have to stop him scoring or turn him over anything, does he? All he's got to do is... is just get his KOs back. Yeah, it's just literally end this half 1-0 down, score on his own turn 7 or turn 8, and then go overtime and win the toss. And he can, he can get through it without even succeeding on defense, can't he? There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that actually wonder like, and this is also a thing I talked about today like why I'm such an aggressive coach, and I would I would like to say like this is a perfect example of why I'm such an aggressive coach because if you if you hold back and if you keep creating that wall like you're gonna get removal after removal after removal without achieving anything on the pitch. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I rather have the, the destiny in my own hands so to speak and yeah, just try to force something at least. This is um, this is just a bit of a standstill now. 
comes in the back now, doesn't he? Surely he's got dodge away from this guy, so he can go one, two, three, four, leap in here. Seventh is yeah. only a double uphill. It's only a, it's, it's only a double uphill. I, th I think you go for that. Plus the scatter could be amazing, couldn't it, if you power him on that? But he doesn't. Oh, God. He's not, certainly not getting the block dice either. See, that's, that's the thing, like, even if you hit that player with Mighty Blow, like, maximum you achieve is maybe the removal there if you're fortunate. And then you haven't achieved anything on the pitch. So, like, you're, you're not preventing the touchdown that way, effectively. I, w I wouldn't have hated the leap in for the uphill. Just the fact it's yeah. only a double uphill and not a triple uphill. Pretty much, pretty much. Relying on his witch not getting powered now. Yeah, you are, you, that's uh, uh, that's Leffe, a you actually there. you're actually saying now you want me to feel miserable. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you go this way? Do you go this way? It's interesting, isn't it? I I quite like going through this guy for the seventy five percent knockdown, and then like you know only getting a little bit further forward because if you don't power this guy, you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? Oh, yeah, so he isn't. He isn't. Yeah. Okay. So he's. He... That's the power. So finally getting it's to just... the. <laughs> the there you go. He's definitely the, not going to get players. all the now. <laughs> yeah. Now it's now you have, you have lost the uh, the momentum for the for the uphill sack, hmm. basically. Did he have an apple still? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, no, is... he used it already. PC is the plucky underdog in this match. <laughs> I think I would have preferred the uh, the Palmer at risk there than that Witch Elf, personally. <laughs> I, don't oh. know. I think it doesn't matter. <laughs> at least, at least, at least this means this match is probably going to finish in time, so we um, so we can check in on the next match as well, which is Seabrass's game. Yeah, I might I do that and do the wrestling later, to be honest. Like, do the wrestling tomorrow because um, I haven't made the card again because of... Oh, Jesus, Jim. I was sorting out the Blood Bowl Super League uh, on the website, so... Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Here we go. That's the fire. Other cars. <laughs> oh my goodness, what are we witnessing here? <laughs> oh, dwarves, dwarves. All of our futures in Blood Bowl 2020. <laughs> That's the future, isn't it? A, a dwarf hitting you with his beer. <laughs> Tankered forever. Yeah, he's, he's right about these troll slayers, isn't he? Holy shit. I thought he was going to pile on it for a second. I was like, PC might actually foul him. He's still got the bribe. Oh, he's a, he would 100% <laughs> be fouling him. So what, what would, it, would have been the, the optimal Dark Elf approach here would have would have probably been like receiving first. Like, how do you deal with this? Like, you receive first, try to score on turn 8, and then what? Yeah, and then run away. Daka first half. I think I just... I think I think I would have kicked, but I would have just ran away the entire half and yeah. tried for one turn to save my ass with more elves than I've got here. Yeah, maybe, maybe. receive so you've got eleven men. Receive so you've got eleven men, and Daka and and score and turn eight, and then the second half run away and then win the toss. Like you could one one this, but I don't think you can win in normal time. Basically, maybe he's get a blitz. I guess. Oh, maybe he's kicked so that you might get a blitz. Maybe the eleven players. Because a blitz is how you can win the game, isn't it? Basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Kick and hope you roll a blitz. There you go. I mean, I, I, I did it pretty well versus Singolo uh, two seasons ago. So like, uh, maybe I should have given Thomas see some lessons on how to roll a blitz. Right? <laughs> like, like that's... Yeah. <laughs> that's what you do against Wars. Uh, Slim, I ended up getting the win in overtime, won the toss, and then, uh, and then two turn with. I did it suboptimally and got lucky. So you already know um, your next opponent, Jim. Um, I don't know, it's Chorfs or Orcs. I don't know, I don't know if other people know, but I don't know if they've played already, but it was Orcs or Chorfs in the next round. 
Which one would you rather have? Uh, neither. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like the ch I'd like the chores to completely. Classic answer. Yeah, I'd like the chores to slaughter the orcs and then somehow lose. Uh, there you go. But yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Like yeah, at least with the with the <clears throat> with the chores you can hit back a little bit on the hobgoblins, right? As yeah. well. Yeah, but they've got like four stun firmness and things. So there's no chance of the one turn, whereas could one turn against the orcs? Hmm. It's possible. Yeah, potentially. Oh, he's only got one witch now as well, hasn't he? So it's fucked him on the one turn as well. Yep. Yep. Rip. Yeah, I, I, I'm not much of a of a of a high elf expert either. Like again, just too expensive for me. <laughs> like those kind of teams. Yeah, the high elves could have chaffs. Um, they could have chaffs in the round of sixteen and chaffs in the in the quarterfinals, and then the semi-finals, maybe chaos, and then the finals. God knows what's on the other side. This is actually doable. Like, if you manage to power the stand firm player, you can go around the back on the on the on the on the long beard. And then just start the chain from there with the sidestep on the witch elf. That's that's it's not extremely hard. Like it is still like we're still talking about like quite difficult dice. <laughs> Maybe like a one D on the on the for the push. Yeah, I'd say but it's extremely hard. Especially as he's no, doing a whole method battle to it, which defeats the whole object. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was more looking like a like a variation towards the outside, so to yeah. speak. To yeah, yeah, the... yeah, yeah. I knew what you mean. Yeah, pow this guy and then hit in, hit this guy and sidestep to there, and block him again, sidestep to there, and then block it, or block it, sidestep to there, and then block again, sidestep to there, and then yeah. fuck off. But um, pretty much, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna happen like this. <laughs> but if he still had the witch, might be changing, might be changing his mind here. No, maybe not. If he still had the witch, he could have filled in all these squares and then pushed and then sidestepped and then pushed and sidestepped and then got another hit and stuff, couldn't he? But, yeah, Frenzy could have worked miracles there. Yeah, so... Yeah, that was a double... Doubly bad that he lost his Saka because he has lost the, the, the Frenzy for the one turn. Yeah, 40k is the limit for Colfax. We don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> Just push there. It's not gonna work now. You can still one deep power, can you? No, no, he can't. Yeah, no, he can't. <laughs> Surprised that wasn't a Kaz. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should have switched to blitzing with the Pommer at that point. It was so unlikely. Maybe you should have switched to like a Pom Blitz and uh, see if you could remove somebody to a pile. He hasn't piled on once in this game, has he? <laughs> I don't think so, no. Just quietly. It almost feels like... It, it, this, this game almost makes me feel like I had better odds versus the Chaos team after I got eliminated by round 3, or turn 3. <laughs> like, the way this is looking at the moment. But... He still gets the ball, I guess, so... Yeah... He's got nine it's not, players. It's not hopeless. No, you can, yeah. you can DACA, right? I guess. Nine players and DACA so you don't lose any any more players. And it's going to be horrible to like burst through and everything. And he's got no agility and he's got no guard and he's got no strength. So like, he's got no chance. But <laughs> at least he can he can avoid the attrition for like three turns or something by running away. <laughs> I, mean, I, really, I really hate playing on, uh, on, on just... Like the, the 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 overtime toss, you know? Yeah. Like that's the only thing he has. Yeah, that, that, I think that was the only chance he had from the start of the game. Just horrible, just yeah. depressingly horrible. This matchup for him. Yeah. <laughs> In March. <laughs> the fact that PC oh, was boy. the one with the hundred k inducements, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe you should have sacked somebody. Maybe you should have just like sacked the pommer. You know. Well, what do you think? Like, what will happen with the dwarves? With the um, if the redraft system is on, like all those players will have guard right? So there will be 
like after a few seasons that will be extra expensive to keep. Is that is that going to be like a bit of a of a downside for the dwarves because no. they have to keep like most of their players? No, no, absolutely not. The other way around, it's going to be they're going to be so overpowered with redrafts, ridiculously insane overpowered with redrafts. Yeah. To the point where there's no point using any other race. I would say. That's my uh, <laughs> that's that's my thing because it's much easier to get guard on a long beard than it is to get block guard on a on a on a black orc, right? Or like block guard on a so on a Saurus. So yeah, very very true. Like the like the, the races that are going to benefit are are the ones that, that already have the core skills like block and wrestle. So like um, dwarves, maybe Norse. Yeah. Yeah. Just disgusting. Yeah, Norse will be quite nice, right? Because they can redraft, and then they can spend all of their accumulated SPP on getting guard on loads of players <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. Jim's gonna become a Norse coach uh, confirmed. No. <laughs> I can confirm I wouldn't, but yeah, that's the thing. The, the starting skills gets gets more important, and obviously, uh, dwarves have. And, and one skill. Things that are good after one skill. Things that are good after zero skills or one skill become the best. And it's dwarves. And, and they also don't need rerolls and the, at all because they can just take a leader. They can take a leader runner and then redraft down to zero rerolls. You know, and their, their initial team is really light as well. They're, they're, like it's, they're just cut better than anyone else. Except maybe Chorfs. <laughs> <laughs> so Chorfs could just be a Mormon Max Dwarf team because they could have five Hobgoblins and six Chorf Blockers that are just like long beards. But that would be really depressing. I think I think Dwarves will be better. Because this team is talking, horrific, isn't it? We're talking about massive differences then, right? Like we're talking about like Dwarves being so strong then after a few redrafts compared to the other teams, right? Yeah. Um, are we are we are we gonna see like maybe a, a um, a re reconsideration of the rules at some point, maybe. No. Like I hope, I hope we do. No, I don't think we will because because people are going to play what they like, right? You know, like chaos are, are, are by far the strongest at the moment for like you know <laughs> leagues like rebel, you know. And but people still use different th teams, even though chaos are the best player, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> true. Like, there's no doubt that the Chaos are the best because they just, they, you know, they have all the clop on and so their players die less and they, they get to insane TV and they just murder everything without thinking. Like, Chaos are definitely the best. Chorfs do better in in Chalice because of the diverse format, but in leagues where there's less diverse formats, it's just claws, it's just claw, cho claw Chaos smash smashing into the Claw Chaos. Hi, TV Nurgle. Like I've oh, seen fuck me, I just before. fell asleep. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's also partly what the reason why I'm... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm good. I hope, I'm good I, I hope we're not here. boring you, Skuro, myself. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, it's not oh, okay. you. <laughs> That's amazing. Holy shit. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, PC, don't watch the VOD. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's also a big reason why I'm giving up on the whole perpetual league thing. Like I think we're looking at, I'm looking at the last season of Rebel and OCC, and it's also partly because um, because like week in week out, I'm playing with a 1200, 1300 team, and I'm not only talking about Skaven, <laughs> but also about humans in OCC, mm -hmm. and I'm playing against 2000, uh, 2100 teams, and at worst it was 2500. Nurgle, um, with my 1300 escape, and like it's not fun anymore, you know. Mm. I, I did manage to win that game. Few pluses, but... <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like everything had foul appearance at, at 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 that point. Like everything had sent firm at foul appearance. Uh, even the rot that said foul appearance, it was that that developed. <laughs> like I I I didn't know what to do. Like terrible. Oh man, foul appearance, massive buff no, in, two, in in uh, Blood Bowl three, by the way. Yeah. Huge. Um, what what what's happening? Uh, you've got to declare the blitz at the start of your action, right? You've got to declare the target of your blitz at the start of your blitz action now in Blood Bowl three. Um, 
So you would say, you know, you'd say like this, this blitzer's going to blitz this runner, right? Then if this runner's got foul appearance and you roll a one, you don't even get to move. You just stay there. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely an impact. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Might be a good call to, to get foul appearance on my gutter, sir. <laughs> yeah, foul appearance on like uh, every all underworld goblins, right? They just go, they just all go um, foul appearance. Um, to Alangus, thank you very, very much for all those, all those bits. Glorious, much, much more exciting than this horrible, fucking, pointless game that we're watching. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, there's been a breakthrough, Jim. There's been a breakthrough in the dwarf line. That witch elf pushing up the sideline there. No one can hit her. Maybe no. someone can hit her. No, it's it's not so easy now. Um. That's true, Mordor, but also you're not basing the ball or whatever and stuff, so like, it can be, it can, it's a huge buff. Because you, you could be like, you could be stuck on a Claw Mighty guy, right? And you could be like, uh, I've got a, I've got an elf, I'll just blitz this best gore over here. Oh, no, uh, no, the last, <laughs> the last player is going to be two squares right of the, of the runner here, just to cover this off. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Don't worry, Cyanide won't code that right. Yeah, that is that is a possible that is a possibility. Um... Dormant, Steve Marty, dormant. They did say yeah, that explicitly. Yeah, it's the same as if you like you know if you if you if your tree take root takes root, you can't you can't hit. You know, like if you declare a blitz with a tree, and he's in base to base contact with somebody, and your roots, you can't hit. Because his, his turn ends when he roots, and he was trying to move, so he stops his move and his turn ends. So with with when you when you declare your blitz against a foul appearance, if you fail a foul appearance, your blitz has failed, so you don't move at all. It was just clarified in the latest uh, thing that's just out. I gotta say, like as 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 much as we are watching this boring ass game, um, <laughs> it's it's good to be on the stream anyway. Like like. It's been a good long time ago when we when we first played each other, Jimmy, and uh, didn't mm -hmm. expect that we uh, that we'd be working together like this, so to speak. So that's really cool. Oh, Jimmy's Come only on. partially a prick about losing to someone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Guru. You're welcome. That was a compliment, I think. <laughs> Almost. Why? Why did he? Why did he go there? Does it matter? No, I guess it doesn't, but shouldn't you have gone here? I guess this is better. Yeah, this stops that a bit. Yeah, okay, that was yeah, yeah. Clever bastard. <laughs> Take away as much of the movement of the dwarves as, uh, as you possibly can, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, no, good. That, was, that, was, that was good. I thought he was letting somebody in here, to be honest. And I was like, no, it doesn't It doesn't let anyone in there at all, so it doesn't matter. He just scores here, doesn't he? I, did, I guess he could try and screen off no, you, one more turn. Screen. Yeah, you stole another turn. Fucking rats don't wear suits, guys. Come on. <laughs> He's got to worry, but like if he if he fucks you next time, he won't <laughs> I think PC would be perfectly fine with him scoring on turn 12 here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I do keep the um, the red suit for special occasions, and stupid probably. Like lately, people have been uh, asking me about doing a hot top stream in a in a red suit. So. Oh God, that'd be amazing! They'd <laughs> <laughs> be scoring on turn eleven, actually. Actually, yeah. playing Blood Bowl in a well, in a hot top, yeah. Yeah, I didn't hate scoring there because, like, yeah, you could have screened, you could have got like, you know, that you could have made the two plus to get like three players there, but. PC could have really, like, you know, really steamed in afterwards and might have made it tricky, so I guess just scoring and then hoping to get a blitz. I guess. I guess you just hope to get a blitz. <laughs> the American. Fucking YouTube. <laughs> Jim Tubwen. The one never person be. in this fucking country that doesn't want to be an American. Actually, that's not true. There's plenty of us. 
<laughs> Fuck you, Tom. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can't wait for this meme to dry up. <laughs> So, so how's the how's the how's the how are the CCLs going this season, uh, Jimmy? Uh, not bad actually. I did I did, I did uh, high elves again. I'm doing high elves again. Full time high elf coach confirmed. You're falling in love with the race, uh, Jimmy. A little bit, yeah. They got a hat a lot, which is brilliant. <laughs> that's, <laughs> my that's my favorite part of them. They go ha. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. An entire team of arrogant pricks. Why do you love them? <laughs> <laughs> Although, if I remember correctly, you did say you didn't like uh, how they look. I didn't like the like, models. No, I didn't like the uh, you know the Games Workshop models when they brought them yeah. out. They they look goofy as fuck, to be honest. These don't look as bad as the uh, the original Games Workshop models. Ah, yeah. Oh, and the cool. piling on animation is pretty sweet. Yeah, Kale's at eating those. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah. Ha! Yeah, I need to make the hat emote, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> How much for a Jimmy Hot Tub stream? In infinite amounts. There's not enough money in the world. Well, <laughs> you, well first off, you gotta buy him a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's not just gonna be, ooh, the dubs come out. Oh, the ball boy. Based. Imagine if he still had his, his wrestle stripper yep. and he would have had to yep. make the handoff this turn. But. I mean, it's, it's, at least he's got his piling on without claw to hit the armor nines. It's yeah. the new meta, Jim. Like everyone knows that uh, that that people are visiting the hot tub ladies because of their blood pool scale. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, dear. So it's it's a thing to do, you know. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much, Tua. Yeah, you would be better mm -hmm. off saving up. You'd be better off saving up the money to try and get one of those hot tub streamers to play Blood Bowl than Jim to do a blood uh, a hot tub stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be that, that would be, be incredible. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Ask Amaran how much to play Blood Bowl <laughs> <laughs> versus Art. <laughs> versus Art. I wonder if Art is going to be that harsh hero as well then. <laughs> It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Are you fucking mental? <laughs> A fucking shitty kids game. <laughs> it. It'd be amazing. Watching Art lose to one of them would be even better though. <laughs> Just set it up, but have Jim playing on their account. <laughs> uh, man. That would be glorious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, he still has his bribe, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Or did he use it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's still got his bribe. He's still made another cast. Yeah, he's made 3,000 three cards. <laughs> Don't, don't blame us, Zeladonio. Blame Purple Chest for this <laughs> abomination. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not our fault. I mean, what can you do? What can you... Like, this is always how it's going to go as well, to be fair. Like... I, I, yeah. Like, it, it's just... It's just it's just quite sad to watch. Like, you need a kind of a miracle to, to really turn it around. Like... <laughs> Yeah. You, you said you need a miracle right as you rolled dub skulls. That could not have been more perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just horrible luck as well. But, um, like, if I remember my match versus Singolo, like, it had some sort of, of, of build like this as well, but he, he only had one one runner, right? And then it just yeah. got a rock in his face so at the start. Bad. Like, you, you need to have something like that. Um, I remember if we, if we talk about art, um, just continuously... Um, ranting about the the kickoff events, <laughs> but like in in some situations you just you just really need them. And if you look at this kind of thing, where it's where the where the skills are so much tipped for the for the for the dwarfs, like what else can you do? You know, you got to make it a, a game that's interesting for both the sides, and not not a game that to to make it interesting for one side, the stronger side, so to speak, on the team that is. Ooh, I'm not sure I like this. Not what I would do, but who can say if it's right or wrong? <laughs> um, 
Dwarves get a lot of shit. Yeah, no, exactly, Sludge. Like, that's the thing. That, that, but that's what made it worse, right? If this was Singolo or somebody else. Yeah. Uh, you know, no offense to Singolo. Maybe they could, uh, you know, maybe they could, like, overblock or something, you know, and leave it a little bit open or whatever, like, you know. Like anyone else, but it's fucking PC, so he's fucked. <laughs> you know, like that was the thing. It's no, it's no, it's no, uh, it's no disrespect to Thomas T either. It's just, it's just what he. It's, it's, it's PC with dwarves, and his team is like so much better, so much better than Thomas T's, and it's a hundred TV cheaper. It's like, he's just fucked, that is, isn't he? That as well, but this is this is also just. I feel like one of the worst matchups because uh, even though it's an agility team, like um, I, I think that's what Slush says, like it's partly true. Like it, it also depends on the matchup. But if even if this is an agility team, this is a really, in my eyes, a really slow agility team. Like mostly movement six, seven. Yeah. Um, and you can't you can't even take advantage of like um, a, a, a small positional, yeah, uh, inaccuracy. Like you can do with uh, Skaven, uh, Wood Elves, um, whatever, you know, like you don't have that, that window of, of having that movement. True. So like, it's so difficult playing this as Thomas D and, and um, Purple Chest, it is, it is probably like harder than it looks at the same time, but I would say like, it's quite easy to just put the guards in there and, and, and get, get the areas in there. So with all due respect to Purple Chest, of course, because he's an amazing coach. Um, wonderful, wonderful positional coach, but this is this is quite a good game for him. Let's just say <laughs> that. Yeah, and I mean he has been lucky as well, hasn't he? Three fouls, three cards. Like that's stupidly lucky. So, oh no, I think he made four cards, didn't he? I think uh, four fouls. I think the first foul he didn't cards, but since then he's made four fouls, hasn't been spotted once, and he's cast three times. Good evening, little wrestler. I mean, what can I do for you? That's fucking crazy, yeah. isn't it? Like, that's really, really, really lucky. As well as it being really, really, really unfair game. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it, I know, I know, I know how it feels like to be in, in Thomas uh, Thomas's shoes, basically. And you, you basically are looking for something to go wrong for the opponent. Like, uh, like you say, maybe one of the fouls just failing, and then the bribe getting sent, uh, uh, giving him a send off, like the bribe failing or something like that. Um, like you, you, you just need something to hold on to to the game, and it's it's just not happening. But he's got he's got the uphill here. He's got the two dice uphill. No, he's not going for it. I think he might. I think I could have. I think I would have gone for the the uphill there because it was uh, it was only a double uphill and not a triple uphill. <laughs> like it's rare that you get the chance to uphill him even in this game. <laughs> you know. Like you said, you were absolutely right about the witch. Like as soon as you said like um, the witch, the witch died. Like he was absolutely fucked after that. Like with the leap, with the leap wrestle being on there, or was it wrestle? It was wrestle. Leap wrestle, strip all. Yeah. Like um, that player being gone. Yeah. Like you don't have anything to to really do something. You know? Yeah, that that was the most important player on the pitch for him, and he put it in the in the front of a. Uh front of an elf column i really didn't like that I, I just i feel like if you i know he was short on players and didn't have a ton of luxury to protect there but i'd much rather put that palmer in front than i would the witch yeah he, he needed he needed to either just steer out completely out of the way or yeah. go in that turn when we said like now he needs to go in yeah like it's, it's one of those two like you can't do this 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 in a half assed way yeah where you're just gonna get pummeled yeah so yeah. I don't know. I think if he had been, uh, I think if he had been piling on, um, who said that? Uh, Kale said he. Yeah, I think if he had been piling on, he would have been fouled out in like turn three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. How many, how many of the dark elf injuries are perms? All of them, because he's not going to have another round in the cup. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> it's the harsh reality. <laughs> I guess he's got a little bit of hope here, right? Because it is on a move four player. So there's a little bit of hope for Thomas T again. Just a little bit of hope. We know what hope does to you in Blood Bowl. Yeah. Yep, it always fucking gets you. 
Oh. Always fucking gets you. Foul. Oh, bribe fail on the good runner. Could have been interesting. Diced. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is good. That's good. It's over. It, it, there's no guard oh, wait, here, wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. That's this a pill. player. That's a pawn player right next to the... Yeah, yeah, it's like an uphill. Just, just uphill. You just three dice uphill this. It's like, two you dice uphill. It. It's two dice two uphill. Uh, it's three. Yeah, just there's a ton of guard on him, Jim. What are you talking about? There's three guard on him. Oh, no, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a two three. dice uphill. It's the dream. Yeah, you've had, you've I, was counting, I was counting the guard that's on the ball carrier. <laughs> yeah. You've got nothing to lose. This, this might be a little bit of an, uh, of an, of an oversight from PC, maybe, because maybe you don't need the ball carrier next to the, the, the object that you're fouling. I think he had to because he's just he's moving four, right? So it was it was really hard to oh, get man. further and stuff. There's no question. Never getting a better shot. Uh, he all this, fuck it. Uh... <laughs> he got a one in nine, just not the one in nine he needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, it was a nice chance. He had a chance. Yeah, didn't need to leap after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the Dark Elf dream to get an uphill. <laughs> an uphill at the ball was an absolute dream because it wasn't a triple uphill. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear. Such a, such a fun and interactive skill, that guard. <laughs> yeah. Man. Just past turn, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. No, they had nothing for us to patch it. They had no stats and no guard. So, you know, he did well to win the I, first round. Yeah, yeah. They, they had a leap, what, wrestle strip. Yeah. A leap wrestle strip, but it was always going to be like a 3D when she was on the board. So, whatever. <laughs> Oh, well, well, he's not making it to next game, Jim. <laughs> no, no, he is. Uh, I can foul the palm. That's a good foul because the palmer might cast somebody randomly. So, so get a big foul yeah. in there after putting the guard. After putting the guard here, so it's three dice uphill still. <laughs> can you even get anyone over there to? The witch reach? Yeah, the, the I, I was, I was, I was genuinely hoping yeah, for a yeah, game yeah. where we, um, where we were, we're gonna talk about like the, the positional difficulties of Blood Bowl. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> didn't well, we can talk there. about the positional difficulties that the Dark Elves currently have in this Blood Bowl game, Chucker, <laughs> if you'd like. Uh, I'm gonna go with they don't have enough players on the pitch to position. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Fast Apache. Yeah. There was there was an inducement. It was a bribe for PC because he was the one down TV on this team stacked with guard and mighty blow. He was the one down TV. Ridiculous. <laughs> Dwarf boot. There you go. <laughs> Just, just follow another one PC for good measure. Just just get that um, runner to do his work on the witch elf. Yeah. Death does he star full me cube? Full, full death star. Yeah, he could. He could full, he could full cube. Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Please. Yeah, he is. He'd be chained. No, he can't even be chained into GFIs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, yeah, I guess he could. Is there any big threats for PC in the in the next coming rounds? Like, no, do we do we know that? No, I think may, maybe Singolo Zor. That's about the hardest one. Oh, what are you doing, PC? Oh, you... <laughs> I don't want to say a dickhead because that's harsh, but I really wanted to see the meat cube. I wanted to see the full nine square cage. Yeah. But I guess he's going to foul the witch out. Yeah, in, in fairness though to PC, if he had done the full death star, he could have been chained out of uh, easy scoring range. He would have had a GFI from the frenzy. I, I mean, mean, it's unlikely, but it could yeah, have happened. 
She would have been fouling with four assists and dirty player. I'm just yeah. saying, it could have happened. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, it could have done. We deserved a meet you. Damn you, PC. You could have done one thing for us. <laughs> Another cast! Four cast of fouls! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Horrific. Just pass turn, man. Nah, Just kill kill a dirty turn, player. Man. Kill a dirty player. <laughs> he's yes. gonna yes, at he's least gonna... something. Come on. He's gonna try. Here we go. Full pile on. Hey, get some of the ball. Oh down. baby. Punish for not getting block. I hope he piles on and then PC fouls him and wins it in overtime. Pylon finally turn 16. We've seen a pylon. I'm really regretting taking pylon on my high elves now after watching this game. Bludge guard would have been so much better yeah. for him this game, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure would have. Uh. Yeah, Ducky, you th count your blessings. You didn't sit through this one. <laughs> you got you got the perfect amount of this game ingested right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine why people generally, like, I'm not talking about this year, right, but people generally want to play like this. But uh, for me, it's always a little bit disappointing. Oh, just score. God damn it, PC, just score. No, he's got to try and get a, This guy, if this guy goes with Cat Wait, why didn't you blitz with him? He could have gone to 27 and be an MVP away. Who's he going to try? Oh, he's trying to, he's on 14, so he wants to try and get a Kaz with a 14 his PP again. Fair enough. Oh my but god, I, I heard if ever PC there were Hexus seen... skulls, this would be <laughs> the best game of Blood Bowl confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if this is. Uh... Oh. To be fair, it's, uh, if it's Hexus skulls, he just wins after all the time anyway. There's no. I know, I know, but it still would be. It, it would have given us something, Jim. <laughs> uh. Alright, there well, go. there you have it. PC won a game of Blood Bowl. <laughs> Well, Congratulations, least... commiserations. Yeah. Well, there he is. That but... asshole made us sit through that. Hi, PC. <laughs> it wasn't in my interest to try and make it interesting. Congratulations, <laughs> PC. Well done. Yeah, well done. Yeah, congrats. Um, you know, congrats. what can I say? The plan A worked. I was luckier than the other guy. <laughs> Particularly with all the fouling. PC did his... Uh... Yeah, PC did his uh, scouting and training for this game by going to Calcium Kaz's gym and just watching him tool out 14-year-olds <laughs> for three be, hours. It, it has to be so incredibly intimidating to, to play against your team. And, and, of course, you as a coach as well, because we know like you play positionally really well. Um, but but the team is just the team is it, just a nightmare for any elf coach, isn't it? It's only got five Mighty Blow and two Stand Firm. It's not anywhere near as big and nasty as dwarf teams can get but it's got just about enough to usually get stuff done yeah. and people still want to hit the slayer all the time don't they yeah that I, I, like, <laughs> I like the dirty player by the way the dirty player on the on the line it's interesting the dirty yeah, player fouling was, game was on wasn't it? point today it really really yeah, was i mean it helps point. that if you're driving in a cage you can usually get some fairly solid assists in um, <laughs> but the ref just didn't give a damn did he no, he didn't. He was very definitely a dwarf fan. <laughs> it was like four cars from five fouls or something. <laughs> it was ridiculous, yeah. Um, I, I, look, I can only apologise. Sometimes you get lucky, and today I got incredibly lucky. I just deleted those elves at a rate of knots, didn't I? It never let up, really. Yeah, like uh, as soon as we as as soon as we saw the witch elf, uh, the the rest will strip all witch elf go down. We yeah. already said like this is going to be impossible because like um, he, he kind of needed to rely on an, on an, on a leap into uh, two dice uphill like yeah. it's that ridiculous to really yeah. do something and um, as soon as he doesn't have that like you don't have any odds to really get the ball there. So um, yeah, I mean that one foul did fail, which if I'd had the nerve to do it with the blitzer hit first, I could have fouled with dirty player and maybe stunned him at least. Um, the one that gave him the two die up here in the middle of my cage. So there was one that really wasn't on point, but the rest all just fired completely, didn't they? Yeah. And I already thought coming in with 12, that even if it wasn't that good a piece, if I could get reasonable assists, I would foul as long as the bribe was there, and then try and switch to better pieces. Because, you know, he had an AV7 blitzer, two witches on the field, that's three AV7s. 
So at the minute you can get up on numbers, you can really cause him problems to be defending and not keeping one of those hittable. Hence the greed re-roll in the first half as well, trying to chip that 87 blitzer, because the diving tackle is another issue. You know, a bludge step diving tackle, even against dwarves, is still a pain in the ass. Yeah, I think I think diving tackle in general definitely is a, more of a pain in the ass to, on average, like edgy three teams, like edgy three players, you got to yeah, say, like the runner and that definitely. kind of thing. So like, um, I can I imagine mean, you're you, really you diving tackle, tackle them, and then half the time you're on your ass, and they're they're laughing as they wander away still. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it, it works, and then the dodge makes it not work. I mean, it's a, it's terrible for that. It really doesn't stop elves very well. And if they've got AG5, it just doesn't stop them at all. But it's still, you know, it's still worth a go, isn't it? Um, we, were, we were having a really technical stream. We were talking about hot tub streams and that kind of thing. So, like, we um, yeah. definitely tried Yeah, to well, I didn't, I didn't give you much to talk about, did I? It, it really wasn't that much of a thriller <laughs> nope, of a game. Definitely didn't um, fall asleep in my chair for two turns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Skuro. <laughs> Uh, look, as I said, it's you know, cool. in my defence, it's, cool. it's not, not in my fault. interest to make it interesting, is it? If it's interesting, yeah. something's gone very wrong with what I'm hoping to do. At no point in the prep for this game did we expect anything than what we sat through. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, not, not <laughs> I, I, I gave I gave Thomas T some credit because, like, I do I do know Thomas T from um, from Rebel and OCC, and I know he's a good coach. So, like, I knew like, okay, if if PC makes some kind of mistake, like, this could be really interesting. I'm very capable of doing. I make mistakes all the time, so um, you know, I, I did, did feel my my shapes had to be on point, and I I was very defensive with that H cave, but H cage. But I was trying to deter him from leaping in, um, yeah, which I know that doesn't really do in this edition. But at least it, it gave lots of uphills and meant that if he wanted to, he'd have to put lots of elves in cancelling and things. Yeah, there was <laughs> one turn where he could have just gun. double uphilled. Like one turn, he could have two dice uphill instead of three dice uphill, and I think he had to leap in that turn. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, didn't. I was trying very hard not to make that available, but it's impossible to never stop a two red, probably. Yeah. Unless yeah. you've got, you know, Edgard on absolutely everything, which I'm pretty close yeah. to, but I haven't quite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were definitely shouting in the, in the casting room, like, it's either do it this turn or never do it at all, just, just back everything off on the side and make sure the players don't get injured. Like, it's either one of those, you either go full out or... or yeah. Or I mean, he said when he, he stood up, the guy that didn't get stunned on that foul. As he went for that two to two red die with a, you know, blockless scum out. Um, he said, look, I think this is the best shot you've given me, so I have to take it. And of course, if it failed, it was probably game over and it did fail. But um, yeah, I didn't think I gave him particularly much. No. Oh, you did well. You did extremely well. Like, uh... Well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone sounds thrilled. I know. Look, I'm sorry to everyone in the stream. I'm sorry you had to sit through that. There will be harder games and tougher games, but against Dark Elves, you can't give them an mm. inch because they stay so well. But if your shapes aren't good, if you're allowing too much threat, and one or two turns, when I started to get on top of them, I did allow a little bit of get some possibility trying to suck him into a battle that I was already winning. No, um, I did. I did ask until then, I had to be super, super careful, I thought. I did ask this to, please, uh, to, to Jimmy and, and Skuro as well, but are, are there any big threats for you in the next couple of rounds? Did you, have, did you look ahead? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't usually look ahead, to be honest. Um, you know, it also, look, this sounds awful, I know, but it kind of confuses me when people say, oh, yeah, you know, I've studied the next three games and I've put three practice games in with a couple of mates and looked at their last four replays and stuff. I can't be asked with any of that. I just turn up. I mean, I do have a bit of, think, a bit of a think about the inducements. And Thomas was nice enough to tell me he bought an elf about an hour and a half, two hours ago. Um, so at that point, I knew it was the bribe, which I'd been considering dropping a beard to get anyway. Um, so he was a complete gentleman, but I mean, that's I mean that's about it, really. When you sort of played as much as me, unless it's something very unusual, you can just, you know, spin in and hit stuff. Um, coming up next is some huge orcs from Singolo, uh, yeah, which are being shown to you now. <laughs> yeah. um, that's going to be difficult. Look at them. They make me look positively creative and fun. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. So but... <laughs> if, if, as I suspect, it's that against mine, then that has a clear advantage because it's got everything I've got, but four strength, four pieces. Five yep. strength, four pieces. It's got less guard than you, hasn't and it? And a troll. And it has got a um, less wizard. It's got one less only wizard. Only by about one. Yeah, it's got one less wizard. That's That could be interesting, couldn't it? Yeah. And as we I all know, when I'm against orcs, I just knock out them all. So that'll be uh, what I need to do. I look forward in. I look forward to a game in which uh, 11 players run to the middle of the pitch, base up another 11 players, <laughs> and everyone just kind of flails around throwing some dice. 
Oh, Should be yeah. a fun one. That that <laughs> does look like what would happen there. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, it's my hope they don't get through, but I think they probably will. Yep. And then I think El Dudorino will get through his round two as well, uh, which puts him also up against some huge nasty orcs, but with a better chance because he has claw. Um, so if I get through those orcs, then it'll either be other big orcs or El Dudorino's big chaos. Big-ish chaos. No so yeah, two very tough rounds of weight, but you know, it is what it is. It's Blood Bowl, isn't it? It is what it is, and on that bombshell, congratulations, Purple Chest, <laughs> commiserations, Thanks, Jimmy. Thomas T. Thank you very much for joining us, Chunter and Skuro. He's not just an American, he's called Skuro Mezzo. <laughs> <laughs> not Chunter, yeah, Crystal Hunter, there you go. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.